Hello and welcome to writing Java apps on Cloud9 in Google App Engine for Java. We found how easy it is to get a REST-like API application set up and deployed by using all of the knowledge we've gained in the videos of this course. In putting together a new web client application with servlets and JSPs on App Engine, we can discover the utility and simplicity in implementing some of the amazingly powerful services App Engine provides. This exercise will show us directly how easy it is to turn a simple web client into a rich, actionable, full-blown web application with world-class cloud technologies powering its backend on App Engine. In this section of the course, we'll get a new web app set up and then supercharge it by implementing some powerful App Engine services. We'll first get a new Google Cloud Platform project and new Cloud9 workspace integrated and then clone a base web app to which we can immediately add data classes for the app's data store and memcache implementation. Then we'll add in App Engine's task queue services to illustrate their utility and power when used behind a web application. We'll then examine a typical user authentication implementation on App Engine to secure our new web app. And finally, we'll see how App Engine's deployment utilities work and how our development and production flows can leverage the versioning features provided. Let's get started with our new app. Bring up a Google Cloud Platform console and a Cloud9 Workspace Wizard page, and let's create a new web app. In the first video of this section, entitled Implementing Memcache, we will start from square one again with a new web app. Instead of a REST API type of app, this will be a web app based on servlet and JSP technology. First, we will need a new GCP project and integrated Cloud9 workspace for coding our app. We can then clone a new base web app project into our workspace to kickstart our code. To get our data classes in place so we can query for our app's data, and then get memcache working for us so our app performs well in the cloud and runs on App Engine as efficiently as possible. You know how to create a new Google Cloud Platform project, so create one and then create a new Cloud9 workspace. Integrate it with the Google Cloud Platform project, and I'll meet you in the Cloud9 IDE where we can start creating our new app. Here within our newly integrated workspace, we first open a terminal on our workspace root and use the gcloud components update command to bring our workspace's gcloud utilities up to date. When we're current, we then use the gcloud init command to initialize our workspace for a project that relies on gcloud utilities. Follow the prompts to assign the proper Google account and GCP project to the gcloud utility config. With our workspace initialized, we can use Maven and an app engine archetype to generate a base app project. We use this Maven command, and be sure to change your app ID to your Google Cloud Platform project name. In my example here, my project name is C9 Web App. Of the options presented in the wizard, the first is the archetype we want to base our project upon. Here we choose option three, which is a basic skeleton for a Java app on App Engine standard environment. Choose the latest version of the archetype. Group ID is the package path you choose to use in your app's code. Use a reverse URL scheme. For artifact ID, use your Google Cloud Platform project name. Use the default for the version. Package is pre-populated. Hit enter. Then all of the options are presented, and we can see that not everything is correct. So we choose no here by entering N and we'll go through the process again, having the additional options we need presented this time through. Use the same parameters. Then we see the new options. For Use App Engine API, we need to select True. This gives us more API features. Choose False for Endpoints 1 and 2. True for JSTL. Then most importantly, select True for Use Objectify. This way, Maven will configure Objectify in the POM file for us. So now we're good. Hit Enter to generate the project. Now we can go into the new POM file and scroll down to the end. We need to add an App Engine Maven plugin to make our development server work properly on Cloud9. This assigns address 0000 and port 8080. Everything else in the POM should be accurate, so we can save it. Then go to the command line and change into our Java projects directory. From here, we can do our first build and see if everything is configured properly. Excellent. Now we can spin up an instance of our app on the dev server. Then go to preview our app in the IDE's browser. 
And yes, it's running as expected. And for our final configuration test, we can try to deploy our app to the cloud. Use the MVM app engine colon deploy command. With the deployment complete, we can go to our GCP console and check for this app's version in our app engine environment. If we click its arrow icon, we can open the app in a browser. Great, it all works. Now we can write up some data classes so we have some Star Wars data to work with. First, let's define a movie entity. In our projects source slash main slash java slash com, and for me, it's slash aloha codeworks slash Star Wars, and in this directory, create a new file called movie.java. In the file, I'll paste in the code we need. This is nearly the same as the movie class we created in the last section. The difference is that we're using Objectify here instead of the data store low level API. We can see our package path, then the Objectify imports that we need for this class entity, ID, and Objectify service. We have an at entity annotation to indicate to Objectify that this class is a data model and should be treated as such. Objectify will see the class's instance variables and use them to create a persistable entity object for the data store. We use at ID and a variable name ID typed as a long integer to have Objectify automatically create a long integer key on the object in the data store. This is a convenient way to have a unique key produced automatically for us whenever we create and persist a new entity in the data store. We see the constructor is the same as before, and with Objectify, our save movie method becomes a one-liner, using the Objectify services save method and referring to the object with the this operator. We can save this file, and then create a new file called StarWarsData.java. I'll again paste in the code. This class is kind of a utility class. We see the package path and the imports for the class's requirements, Objectify service, and the Java list. And then there's two methods defined, create Star Wars data and get movies. The create Star Wars data method is the same as the class we defined in the previous section, but is using Objectify's save method in batch mode to persist the newly created movies. The end of the Objectify save line uses dot now to tell Objectify to save these in synchronous mode. We do this because we're querying for these entities as soon as they're created, and we want them persisted immediately so they're available. We can see in the getMovies method that we've replaced the long-winded data store API query logic with a single line using the objectify service and the dot load method. We've indicated the type as the movie class and that the operation should return in a list format. We've defined the variable movies as a Java list of type movie. We can save this file, and then we go into the web app slash web inf directory and open up the web.xml application configuration file. Here, where our servlets are listed and mapped, we need to add a filter for Objectify so it doesn't cause any memory contention issues on the server. I'll paste the filter at the bottom of the file. We can see the last line refers to an OFY helper class in our source directory structure. We'll create that file next. Back in the Star Wars directory, with the rest of our code, we create a new file called ofyhelper.java. Here's the code. Notice the class implements server context listener. This means that the class will be run when the server starts an instance of our app before any requests are handled. The logic on line 9 registers our movie class with Objectify, so it's aware of the class and recognizes it as a data model. This has to happen before any data store operations are called on a movie object, and we're covered here as this class extends servlet context listener. Excellent. We can save this off and go to our JSP. Open the app's only JSP file, index.jsp, in the web app slash webinf directory. We'll add some new logic and UI so our Star Wars data can display instead of the boilerplate. First, we need to add some imports to the JSP. I'll paste them in right at the top of the file. We're importing our movie class and our Star Wars data class. Then we import Java list and add in the JSTL functions tag lib so we can use the JSTL escape XML tags and keep our injected data safe. So here in the body section of the JSP, I'll comment out the original UI and logic so we can add in our new stuff. Then I'll paste ours in. 
I'll format this a little bit to make it more readable. And we can see here that we're calling the Star Wars data classes static create Star Wars data method to populate our data store with some workable entities. We then immediately query for those entities by using Star Wars data static get movies method. We've defined a movies variable as a list of type movie. The logic begins with an if statement that checks for an empty movies list. If it's empty, it displays a message. If the query returns some movies, a page title is displayed and a for loop iterates the movies and displays them in a nice neat format. Each movie entity data value is assigned to a page context attribute and each of those are referred to in the following UI definition. Note the use of the JSTL escape XML function tags. This is all pretty simple and straightforward JSP stuff. Let's see if this builds properly. Great, it compiles. Let's run it on the dev server and see what it looks like. Okay, everything looks good. Obviously our data was created, persisted, queried, and displays properly, as it's all here. And we've configured our JSP to run our Star Wars data class methods appropriately, and to display the queried data properly. Nice. Okay, we've done a lot to get to this point of implementing Memcache. With our project working on Objectify, turning on Memcache is quite simple, as Objectify manages it for us in a way that is normally more performant than if we were to implement Memcache manually. With that, let's see how implementing a global cache in our project with Objectify is actually done. Objectify caches data globally using App Engine's memcache service for improved read performance. The cache is shared by all live instances of an application and will normally improve the speed and reduce the cost of an app's data store utilization in that requests made to memcache incur no costs, while requests that go to the data store are tallied, with each incurring a small fee. Memcache reads typically complete in a couple of milliseconds as compared to data store requests, which typically complete in tens of milliseconds. The global cache is enabled by default. However, we do have to annotate our entity classes with at cache to make them cacheable. It's really simple. With this one word annotation, Objectify will utilize the memcache service to reduce read loads on the data store. Interestingly enough, in memcache, the fields of an entity are cached, not the POJO class itself. In other words, only the data of a POJO is cached, not methods and logic. Query operations are not cached, so only when entities are retrieved by their key are they eligible for the cache. So with the code we have in our app at this point, memcache will not be utilized as we are accessing our movie data only one way, through a query. As we move further into the videos of this section though, we'll see the benefits of this memcache implementation and how it will keep our costs down and performance up. With memcache, writes to the data store are written through the cache. Saves of new entities, updates to existing entities, and deletes are all mirrored in the cache as our transactional commits. Objectify's global cache provides near transactional consistency with the data store, even under heavy contention. So it can be thought of as bulletproof when designing an application. Of course, finer details for sync concerns and data freshness can be added with Objectify's API, but that's beyond our discussion here. Additional details about App Engine's memcache service are available in the API documentation and should be perused to understand its finer details as well. Our objective here was to understand how to turn global caching on and introduce memcache to our application using Objectify in a single annotation in a data entity class. In this video, we started from square one again with a new web app. We first got a new GCP project and integrated a new Cloud9 workspace. We then cloned a new base web app project into our workspace to kickstart our code. We put the necessary data classes in place so we could query for our app's data. Then we got memcache working for us so our app performs well in the cloud and runs on App Engine as efficiently as possible. 